All right, so today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. And although this presentation does not specifically have to do with Nibiru, it does indirectly have to do with the Planet X, Nibiru, Wormwood, Nemesis controversy that has engulfed uh, the conspiracy world for a very, very long time. I would like to talk about a concept known as being awake. And a lot of people have a different definition as to what exactly this means. So please understand that this is just one man's opinion. And I would like to talk about it a little bit. And then I have been asked when I first woke up to what is really going on across the planet. And after I give a little bit of a explanation here as to what I think being awake is, then I will discuss my personal experiences. So, what does it mean to be awake? I can tell you what it does not mean. It does not mean waking up at 5.30 every morning and sucking down gallons of hot coffee to come to your senses. That is one form of being awake, but that's not the gist of what we're trying to get to today. Everyone might have his own definition as to what being awake is. And these are just some elements that I have incorporated into my own life and my own way of thinking on being awake. Elements of becoming awake include opening your eyes and your mind to a larger universe, universe and to understand that, officially speaking, we are fed only small pieces of a very, very large puzzle. A willingness to accept that our government, all governments, has maliciously concealed many truths from the population. The government is out to protect itself, not you, not me, not anyone else who truly cares about exploring the truth. To it, we are pawns on a global chessboard, dispensable, easily replaced. At any given time, know this. We are told maybe 5% of the truth, which means we are potentially fed 95% lies. The government and its forces excel at lying, subterfuge, and deception. It has had centuries of practice, far longer than you or I have been alive. If you are awake or you plan to wake up, you have to be able to employ a few skills and accept a few things that might make life more difficult for you. First, and most importantly, you must be able to use a rare skill called critical thinking, which per Webster's Dictionary means the objective analysis of evaluating the, the, uh, the objective analysis and evaluation of a topic in order to form a judgment. Sadly, 95% of the population, conservatively speaking, inherently lacks this skill. One fundamental reason is that the majority of people prefer arguing emotionally rather than logically. In order to be awake, you have to shelve your emotions to be an effective critical thinker. Otherwise, you will live the rest of your life asleep. Second, and to quote Yoda, you must unlearn what you have learned. Forget everything your parents taught you. Forget most of what you learned in school. Schooling is one of the greatest deceptions of all. Through high school, Children are taught to remember worthless names, dates, and places. A cleverly designed tactic to boggle one's mind with totally worthless facts. College is even worse because of its notorious liberal, liberal agenda. I am not saying that all schooling is garbage. English and some decent math are good skills to have in one's repertoire. M more than once, I have been asked when I woke up. I actually had to think about this question for a little while before coming to an answer in my own mind. I officially 
woke up in 1996. But I started to become aware many years before that. In 1992 or 1993, I began listening to a shortwave radio broadcast called Hour of the Time, hosted by the late great patriot William Cooper. He talked about a lot of conspiracy theories, everything from JFK, 9-11, to UFOs. While I did not subscribe to all of his theories, much of what he said made sense, especially when it came to the government's manipulation of the population, and that got me thinking. In 1996, I woke up. At the time, I worked for a newspaper and was asked to cover a tragedy that occurred off the coast of Long Island. I'm talking about the downing of TWA-800, a 747 jet that exploded in the air a few miles off the coast of Long Island. For those unfamiliar with the incident, the official conclusion was that a mechanical failure caused an explosion in the aircraft's fuel tank. However, my own investigation and that of many others conclusively proved that to be an impossibility and that based on empirical evidence and the eyewitness testimony of approximately 200 people that a missile brought down the aircraft. The case is too complex to discuss here but is worth reading about. The bottom line, my article on the incident provided considerable proof that a United States naval vessel accidentally shot the airplane down with an SM-2 missile. I submitted my article and conclusions to my editor long before the NTSB or the FBI, who had no business in the investigation, announced their fictional conclusion. My editor nearly chewed my head off, telling me to rewrite the article slanting it toward a mechanical failure. Again, this was long before the NTSB went public with that explanation. So, what did this teach me? That A, the government controls the press, and that B, if the government was will willing to conceal the truth behind the TWA 800 incident, it was likely that the government was also hiding the truth behind other so-called conspiracy theories as well. In the end, I refused to rewrite the story and resigned before he could fire me. I left the world of mainstream media and began covering what is, what is commonly referred to as alternative news, exploring, researching, and writing about many controversial subjects, including, obviously, the Nibiru cover-up likely the most elaborate cover-up ever manufactured by worldwide governments because it required so much cooperation. I became aware of the Nibiru conspiracy back in 2003. Back then, I didn't know enough about it to talk about it, let alone write about it, but I began reading everything I could find on the topic. People have criticized me because I refuse to consider cell phone pictures or cam footage as proof. However, this does not apply to photographs taken with dedicated astronomical equipment. In 2011, I happened across some images that turned up on a popular cons conspiracy forum and on YouTube. Compared to all other footage I had seen, they looked like they could be authentic at least to my very amateur eye. I showed the images to an astronomer friend of mine. His jaw dropped. Where did you get these? He asked me. I told him I found them on the net. He couldn't believe it. I simply asked him if he believed the images were taken through a telescope. He said yes, and that he had never seen them before. In fact, he didn't even admit to knowing anything about the planet X hoopla. When I explained it to him and he again looked at the images, he said, If I were you, I would just forget I ever saw these photographs. And that has led me to where I am today. And that is really all I have to um, say for right now. I appreciate everyone out there who has taken the time to listen to this and watched my videos. And if you subscribe to the channel, great. 
If not, I hope that you do. We appreciate all of our all of our readers, all of our patrons. And this is Michael from Nibiru News, aka someonesbones.com, signing out. I wish everybody a great weekend and God bless. Thank you. <laughs>